Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. This week we are going back to Percy Jackson with Heroes of Olympus Book 1, The Lost Hero. So if you have been enjoying all this content, please do not forget, like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you guys do not miss a video. Also, do not forget, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I will leave all those linked down in the description. There, you will get notifications when I drop my next video. And if I do a poll on Instagram, you can vote on which book series we do next. So if you guys missed all my Percy Jackson reviews, I will leave a link up to that as well as my Ranking the Percy Jackson series video. So go watch that playlist so you can get caught up on the original series before we jump into this. So with all that out of the way, let's hit the intro. <laughs> So this book takes place four months after the last Olympian. Everyone's just kind of calmed down. The Titan War has settled down and stopped until a new threat from the Earth emerges. Unlike Percy Jackson, we don't have a single protagonist in this book. We have three. And those three protagonists are Jason, Leo, and Piper. Each of these demigods has a secret that will affect the quest that they are destined to go on. The three of them are brought to camp where they are quickly claimed by their parents. Quickly after they are claimed, they are sent off on a quest to rescue Hera who is been imprisoned by the new threat, the Giants. <laughs> Starting off with the pro section, we have number one, Leo Valdez. I honestly really do love Leo for several reasons. One being he is just absolutely hilarious. He has honestly some of the best comedic bits in the book and he is the comedic backbone of this book and it is just hilarious whenever he just says something super funny it's just absolutely hilarious and it gets a laugh out of me every time second reason i really love leo is the way reardon writes his backstory the way reardon writes his whole dilemma of i'm the one who killed my mom in a machine shop fire and how he deals with all the aftermath of that reardon does a great job and to his credit he does write really emotional laden backstories but i feel like leo's is probably the best that he's written for most of the entire series so it is a really good backstory and it makes sense why Leo uses comedy so much as to hide the pain and Reardon just does an absolute great job writing all that and between Leo's personality and the way Reardon writes him, it really shows why the fandom really loves Leo. Coming to pro number two, we have the expansion of the mythology. If you've been around my channel a while and you've read my Percy Jackson reviews, you know why I love this expansion of mythology. Heroes of Olympus takes the mythology up a notch. Lost Hero is where it really starts because we start with a new threat that isn't all that talked about in mythology in general. In the Percy Jackson series, we did all the popular stuff, but now in Heroes of Olympus, we're getting into a bit more of the obscure. It's still known, but the general population wouldn't know about the giants or any of that unless you really dove down into mythology you wouldn't necessarily know any of these names that come up for the giants as always i am a just diehard mythology fan so i really appreciate this all right so coming to pro number three we have to talk about medea and midas i honestly think bringing medea and midas two of the more better known names as far as greek mythology is concerned was a really good idea because most people have heard of midas and have heard of medea so as far as just a jumping off point it's a really good idea but i'm really more into what those characters represent for the demigods they represent people that the the gods have wronged and just don't even care because the gods are so powerful that they don't have to deal with the consequences of any of this and it all gets thrown on to their children and it shows the demigods that no their parents are not benevolent as they seem they are just ruthless and do not really care what happens so uh, 
And I also really like how Calypso was brought in for the original series for the same reason. It shows the demigods that the gods of Mount Olympus aren't great all the time, but they're still better than Gia and just pure chaos. And they might be better, but they're not the best. Coming to pro number two, we have the expansion of Camp Half-Blood. So I put this on here for two main reasons. One, it's really great to see Camp Half-Blood expand. It's a place where all the Percy Jackson fans love, and it really is great to see that the camp is expanding and getting bigger all the time. It's great to see that this is happening. Like, it feels like this is a real place, and Reardon, I think, does an awesome job writing Camp Half-Blood as a real integral location to the series. So, second reason I'm putting Camp Half-Blood on the pro list is the the fact that showing this expansion means that Percy making the deal with the gods at the end really meant something. It would have been way too easy to just, just say, eh, Camp Halfwood's gonna stay the same. But no, with Reardon putting as much detail as he did into this expansion, it shows that the gods really took, did their best. And you could just see it in the pure explosion of the camp's size and the camp's population. And it's really gratifying to just see the gods didn't just immediately throw it away. They actually gave a little bit of an effort to do what they agreed to with Percy. And it's really good to just see the camp evolve. With this evolution, we get a lot of really fan favorite demigods from this expansion. And it's just a really good feeling to just see the camp grow. All right, guys. So coming to the con list, we have con number one, Piper. Honestly, I don't love Piper and how Reardon writes her. I don't know what it is. I can never get attached to Piper. She just isn't my favorite character of even the three in this book and even in the seven in the later books. Like, she is just not a great character. And if you guys are fans of Piper, I'm sorry I'm ragging on her, but this is just my personal opinion of her. She isn't the best. As far as the three in this book goes, I love Leo. I'm okay with Jason and just Piper I don't love. I, her dad getting captured by the Giants is somewhat interesting, but that never carries over into the other books. Whereas with Leo's thing, he has his mom's death on his conscience that constantly follows him throughout the entire series. Piper's issue is just her dad gets captured. They save they save him by the end of the book. So it's it never you know, becomes a thing. And the only somewhat interesting thing Piper does have for Native American heritage is somewhat explored. But I feel like that honestly is a very, very missed opportunity to do a bit more expansion of their mythologies. Like, this was a very missed opportunity with Piper. I don't know necessarily how Reardon could have capitalized on it, but I feel like he's a good enough author to know that he definitely could have. on the book here. I love this book. This is an awesome kickoff to the sequel series to Percy Jackson. Heroes of Olympus, despite Piper not being the best part of the group, that is not a big thing for me. I love this book, even despite all of Piper's flaws and her being in the group. It's still a really good book and a really worthy start to the successor series to Percy Jackson. So I'm going to give Heroes of Olympus book one, The Lost Hero, an 8 out of 10. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching it to the end of the video. Please do not forget, if you enjoyed the video, like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification button. Also, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Again, I will link those down in the description. If you guys want to suggest books to me, if you want to see what I'm working on next. So, next week we will be continuing with Heroes of Olympus with Heroes of Olympus Book 2, Son of Neptune. Till then, have a great week, and don't forget, keep on reading. <laughs>